Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the next video of Lab 5 in Advanced Embedded Logic Design Winter 2022 semester. So in this lab, as discussed uh, previously, we are going to uh, add the interrupt in our design and we are going to see the effect of the interrupt on the performance of our FFT accelerator. So what we are going to do in the block diagram design is we are going to use the same block diagram we use into the in the lab three with certain modification. So in the lab three, if you remember, we have used the ACP port. Okay, uh, we have used the uh, AXI DMA. We have used the eight point F fifty. The things will remain the same. Uh, you can add the ILA or you can remove the ILA up to you. You can uh, take that call. Uh, now, a uh, few things you need to uh, make sure that you have incorporated in your blog design. First thing is that when you uh, check the, when you add the ACP port, make sure that in the ACP port, uh, you add the uh, cache currency. So you need to make sure that you enable this one. Uh, as we discussed in the previous lab, by enabling this one, we remove the requirement of the cache flush or cache invalidate uh, functions in while accessing the data from the ACP port. So make sure you do this. Second thing you need to do is that you need to enable the interrupt on the Zinc SOC because now uh, we need to have the allow the DMA to send the interrupt to the uh, the zinc processor whenever the transfer is done. So you need to go to the interrupt tab. You need to go to the PLPS interrupt because the interrupt is being sent from the PL that FFT or DMA is in the PL. So the interrupt is being sent from the PL to PS. So you enable this one. When you enable this one, you will see that you will get the additional port on the uh, zinc SOC. Okay. In the beginning, it can be one bit port or the two bit port. You don't need to worry about then what you should do next is that you should use the concatenation function this ip is there in the ip catalog use the concatenation concatenation function connect the both the outputs of the the dm interrupt m mm to s interrupt and s to mm interrupt so whenever the corresponding transaction mm to s is completed dma will generate the interrupt to tell the processor that i have completed the tra transaction and the same is the case for the S2 mm interrupt. So you need to add the concatenation, uh, you need to concatenate both the interrupts uh, input uh, signal and then pass the uh, combined signal to the processing element zinc. So this is the second change you need to do in your design. Then you can add the debug signal as and when required. Now here I'm going to show you the one additional feature about the debug signal. Till now, what we did, we added only the AXI signal as a debug signal. Now, suppose that you also want to observe the non-AXI signal. For example, you want to observe the uh, this uh, interrupt signal, uh, which are the non-AXI signal. So what you should do before you uh, uh, do the auto connection, you should click on the system ILA. And in the system ILA, you will uh, be asked to uh, define the what are the signals you want to monitor. So here you can see that there are two options. One is the native means non-AXI signal, interface means AXI signal, and mix means combination of three. So you should select the mix one. And here you can see that you are selecting three AXI and two non-AXI signal. Okay, this is what I'm doing it. So you can do the changes and then you will see that there are two non-AXI signal where you can connect your interrupt and uh, a three AXI signal where you I have connected the input and output of the FFT and the GP port uh, I have connected. Okay, so this is the block diagram. Uh, rest of the block diagram remain the same. Uh, please make sure that you complete this block diagram, validate the design, generate the output products, create the HDL wrapper, and generate the bitstream. If possible, keep the bitstream ready before you come in, come to the lab, our next lab session. Okay, so this completes the block diagram design. In the next video, we'll discuss about the application design, how to enable the interrupts and how to process the interrupt in our application.